house and still she wants to come and join mom. with a very full belly. Oh, big stretch out. And a big sigh. Let's see if that little cut's going to come. Oh, back towards the tree. Little one. Hello. Oh, Timo, you were wondering if it's true that you can tell the difference between a male and a female. Oh, look at those brown eyes. Isn't she gorgeous? Oh. Come on, little one, it's okay. to mom <laughs> and getting a kick for his trouble oh isn't this just the most perfect mother's day scene bath time bath time whether or not you want it now three months old they might even still be allowed to suckle for a little bit. They will be almost completely weaned. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> At the moment, completely reliant on mom. Hello, gorgeous. I'm almost certain it's a little Looks like it. It's okay, little one. Oh, they are just so tiny at the moment. On her way to have a quick snack. Well, we can't pull out of the sighting now, obviously. We don't want to scare her away. Give her the chance to have some food. Grown kittens. They're smaller than house cats. Much smaller than house cats still. They really, truly are so minute and I promise you when I have a moment to just show you indicate how big they are with my hands and I will do that but I don't think any of us want to tear our eyes away from this incredible sighting oh, having a jolly good clean look little boy is actually still suckling well done Karula you clever girl comes number two. I have never seen such brown eyes on a leopard cub. <laughs> She's so restless doesn't want to settle down and suckle next to mom or indeed have a bath. Clambering and exploring is what she's going to set out to do. And we are so, so lucky if we do have a boy and a girl here. Because the wonderful, magical thing about Safari Lai is that you're going to get to watch these cubs grow up. Oh. <laughs> 
Sim. Perfeito. I hope you are all getting some extraordinary screenshots. I don't even need to narrate this sighting. It speaks for itself. I'm just going to let you enjoy it. Tolerated the bath only for the shortest of moments. Oh, look at that little lemon grimace. <laughs> look at your little tongue. <laughs> oh, catch the tail. Oh, no, distracted by a smell. You gorgeous little creatures. Oh, no, Mum, I want attention too. <laughs> Need to lie on top of my brother. I have to tell you something. If this cub is a female, we're going to see more independence from her than from her brother in the initial stages. Female cubs usually become independent far quicker than their male sibling. And they stay for a shorter time period than a male cub. So if we've got a male and a female here, we're going to get the most extraordinary insight into the sibling dynamic. Budge up, buddy. I want some breakfast too. Oopsie daisy, careful. Careful. He nearly fell down there. And the answer is she might have been leading them somewhere. Chances are, however, that she would have just left them in a hiding place and gone hunting. And then what she does, instead of taking the kill... Oh, catch that tail. <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm just, I have to watch this. <laughs> Gorgeous little thing. Yes, you. <laughs> so positive scroll, she would have left them lying up safe somewhere, gone off hunting. And then what she does is she goes to collect them. She leaves the kill, which is always a risky business because that male and parlor would be too big for her to pull into a tree at the moment so she'd leave the kill and she'd go and fetch them and actually bring them back and that's one of the reasons why it's so hard being a leopard mom because in that time a hyena could well come through and steal that carcass or even worse be lying up in attendance so she's got to be constantly on her guard <laughs> catch that tail Yes, precious. <laughs> These leopard cubs, of course, have no idea that they are probably amongst some of the most famous leopards in all the world. Well, if I reverse, do you think you're going to have a better view there? Mm, not really, no. no. Actually, a very astute observation from you which leads to a discussion to which there is no firm answer. 
So you want to know why they don't live in prides, where lions live in prides? What could possibly be the reason for that? Julie, the reason we think is, well, let's go to lions first. The, the real question is, why, why do lions live in prides? They're the only social cats. What advantage does it confer on them? For a long time, we thought, well, because they're hunting prides together, they must eat more meat than any other cat does, you know. But it turns out that a lioness on her own eats about the same as a pride of three females. Look at the light coming out on them. So that's not the answer. A pride of, say, five females probably eats slightly more than a lioness on her own, but a lioness is perfectly capable of looking after herself and, if she has youngsters, of feeding them. We think it's got a lot more to do with protecting them from marauding males and maintaining territory. We think that's why lions live in prides and they're the only cats to do so. And I'm sure that has got something to do with their size and the openness of the habitat that they live in compared with cats of similar size like jaguars. This is just brilliant, isn't it? Mm. You couldn't ask for more than this on Mother's Day, everybody, or any day. Morrison's friend. And of course, these things are going to have to be named at some stage, which will create great consternation in the Sabi Sands, as everybody likes to name the leopards. And I personally think George and Charlotte are perfectly acceptable names. Uh, no one is going to agree with me. What do you think, Brian? I think it's fantastic. George and Charlotte. Yeah, I think that's a great name. Very fitting. That's Charlotte there. Mm. <laughs> definitely be allowed. Here comes Mum. We would, we would definitely be have a say. Well, Taxon and Aubrey would probably have the say, the largest say. But that would only be once they're about a year old. Now we've tried, and we we don't know what the result of this is. We've, we're hoping that we'll be able to name them a little earlier because they are such important characters to us. And we had that situation with the last cub here, oh. it was Cindilla. Look, 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 Brian, Brian, right in the top of the tree. Right in the top of this tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me and see it go up there. It's just brilliant. Oh my gosh. So, name wise, I'll get back to it now, everybody. But it will basically be Taxon and Aubrey who decide, and uh, with the other rangers of this area. And we're trying to get them to name them <laughs> as soon as possible. So, because they are important characters to us, and we want them to have a name. to refer to them by. I can tell you for free that it's highly unlikely to be George and Charlotte. Oh my goodness, you see this is where patience just pays off, doesn't it? Brian, is this the best afternoon of your year so far? So far, yes. You know, everybody, you just feel that all is right with the world. Mm. And just to let you know, while you enjoy the absolutely sensational sight of what we're seeing now, 
We will be having a little fireside chat later at 5.30, just to go through some of the wonderful mothering animals that we have here. I can't believe nobody else has asked to come here. Jenny, a lovely question. You want to know if they have favourites among them. So do you think Karula's got a favourite here? I don't think so, Jenny, but maybe. You know, that the cubs definitely have very different personalities. And, and one of the interesting things I've always found is how cubs born as twins to the same litter will have totally different personalities. And so, uh, you know, whether or not that means that the mum's going to have a, a favourite, I couldn't tell you, but, I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me. And uh, there's no better example than her last litter of Konuma and Quartile, at least not Quartile, Quarantine, who had completely different personalities, one very chilled out, the other much less so. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest to find that they had, you know, a favourite. So, I'm just going to move around there. The two little ones are lurking about, completely relaxed, and this time with them, with the vehicle standing still, that's definitely the male. Just standing still with them is going to do wonders for their confidence around vehicles. And hopefully very soon they won't move away from us the way they have been. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Bring them to the kill. Come on, mummy. Here we go, everybody. I think she's thinking about hoisting this kill now. And Genevieve, you want to know how much the siblings bond with each other. She's going to go up the street. Genevieve? Um, they bond nicely. I mean, they're friends until they go independent, after which they probably don't, you know, they not, don't remain mates forever. They go independent and they set up different territories. She seems, I hope she doesn't leave. No, she's asleep there. Oh, you can store you. The little ones are there. Now, look, look, just watch this quickly. Look, 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 look. We're going to keep very quiet, but you can see their confidence immediately plummets as soon as she leaves them. Female's still a bit nervous. I'll keep watching to see if she comes. But he's going to his mum. He might even go to the kill.
Father's Day, he wants to be with his mum. Tulam dona mama muzo figa uzo patela masuiti. Oh, tulam dona mama muzo figa uzo patela masuiti. Amna handi amna handi amna handi amna amna handi Oh, <laughs> 